Last year, Copa 90 and I experienced the unforgettable tournament that was the World Cup in Brazil. This time we're in Amsterdam for a very different type of World Cup, where 64 teams from just under 50 countries have come together for the Homeless World Cup. We came up with the idea in 2001 at a conference uh, about homelessness and then made the first event happen in 2003. People said we were crazy, completely crazy. But we were 18 countries and we had about 500 players all around the world. Here we've got 40 in the men's competition, 16 in the women, and we're in 74 countries in the run. The Homeless World Cup is a cultural melting pot and it's something which is unlike any other activity that I've ever been to in and around football, yeah. be it football for social change or football football. When I first came, I was struck by how diverse the programmes that took part were. Yeah. So I immediately went and I spoke to the heads of delegations, the coaches, the managers, and I was like, how do you do what you do? And I stole their idea. I thought, right, I'm going to take that from Portugal, I'm going to take that from Belgium. We look at it as, you know, all of us being part of one big family, one big very, very happy family, yeah. as is very obvious, yeah. but everyone has their own strengths. And it's just natural for other nationalities to just look at what they are doing best and try to imbibe best practices into their own uh, operations. For instance, you know, this year we have Andy Hook, who is from Street Soccer Scotland, coaching the Indian team. He was down in India for three weeks last month. We've learned so much from England, from Germany, from Switzerland. Really, this is about all of us getting together in a common quest to kick out poverty. We've shared back our learnings, our ideas. It always used to be about homeless people. And we have never been about that. We've all be, always been about people experiencing homelessness. Homeless shouldn't define you. It's not something that is a badge you can't take off. It's just an experience yeah. you live through. Whilst there is a trophy at stake, this World Cup is very different to the ones you've watched before. For example, rules state that players can only ever play in one Homeless World Cup tournament. All of these guys that you see there are direct victims of the financial crisis. A few years ago, they lost a job and eventually they lost everything. If you spoke about homelessness in Greece seven years ago, people would look at you like, uh, huh? well, well, what are you talking about? Now if you walk down the streets of Athens, you just you get, you see, you see them everywhere. There are a lot of urban and rural poor in the country, a nation of 1.2 billion people, about 30% of them are below the poverty line. So it's, it's massive. Basically the kind of players that we work with, uh, all of them live in transitional housing or they are uh, slum dwellers, children of commercial sex workers. You know, back home they're told that they're worth nothing, they're useless, they're go not going to amount to anything in life. When they come here, the national heroes, they were like, the day the national anthem plays for me is probably going to be the best day of my life. And the kind of mental I impact it has on their psychological well-being, you know, it just can't be stated enough. Whilst every player has had to experience homelessness in some stage of their life, football and ability and their personal development in the squad is just as essential. I was born with different capacities, it was a problem like everyone. I never imagined that I could walk, and much less play football. And here I am. It's the dream of every Mexican and of any person in the world to want to represent your country. So if you dream, I think it's possible. I was a heroin addict for like 15 years, and five years ago I kicked off of it. And, uh, yeah, I started to uh, do my old passion again uh, when I was addicted, you know, yeah, you have junkie friends, you know. And when, you, when you're clean, you don't want to hang out with your junkie friends anymore. So those are, to me, the, the most difficult things when, uh, to, to change your life, you know. You don't have that social cohesion anymore. That, this, this helps, yeah, this truly helps, yeah. Como decimos, la vida y la cancha se te ayudan a ser mejor en tu vida y deportivamente. Para personas que no tuvimos una familia unida o una familia, mejor dicho, Te hacen sentirte como dentro de una. So moving forward, once you finish playing, uh, how are you going to contribute to this family? Cuando se acaba el torneo, nos dan la opción de poder participar en nuestro estado, eh, ayudando a los jóvenes y es, dando un poquito de lo que mucho que recibimos, pues. Entonces, realmente nunca se pierde. La familia siempre, siempre está, aunque sea lo lejos. I'm already a trainer and coach for the ladies teams in uh, the city of Utrecht, where I come from. Yeah, we, we organize uh, sporting events uh, for vulnerable uh, groups of, uh, of the society, you know. So, yeah, I feel grateful and blessed to do that. Now in its 13th edition of the tournament and going from strength to strength, the success and results of the Homeless World Cup are clear for all to see. We take our players out of their comfort zones. 
we challenge them, we raise a very high bar because ultimately a lot of homelessness sector and a lot of support for social change is patronising. As I said to you many, many times before, we, we are purely there to facilitate and provide maybe a catalyst for change. It is the players that will try positively transform their own situations. Something really cool I've noticed off the pitch in this tournament is how many have come out to support the event. All three pitches consistently have full stands and over hundreds of thousands have turned out for this event over the last few World Cups. So these are two of the bigger teams, Mexico and South Africa, and the level of football, the level of intensity has really gone up. Final answer, South Africa versus Mexico, 6-4. Congratulations, South Africa. And for those who can't experience this atmosphere live, well, they're watching in their thousands online for the official Homeless World Cup stream. We've provided the link in the description so you too can watch all these games until the tournament ends. I just told my mother this, uh, this morning, so I think she uh, watched the game also. One celebration of life, I guess. Not only of football, but of, also of cultures and life. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. The Brazilians filed past us, not even shaking our hands. And I'm like, okay, they're going to thrash us and they didn't yeah. give us the courtesy of a handshake. But then they line up in front of us, bend down and say namaste. You know, and that I think is, it just sums the entire thing up. Well, there we have it, the 2015 Homeless World Cup. We only got to experience two days of this amazing week-long event, but in that time we experienced so many amazing cultures with inspiring people who are using this event to do exactly what Gareth said. Not see homelessness as defining them, but instead as an experience they've moved away from through their own hard work and determination on and off the pitch. This event is now in its 13th year and it only gets bigger and better and it only continues to allow people who were once stigmatised and disenfranchised from society to be embraced by people who went through the same thing they did.